Thanks for coming, guys. In 1944, I was making a picture at RKO, and one day, second in command at RKO studio, John Joseph Nolan, came down on the set, and he said, Maureen, my God, he said, we have a lot of problems. He said, John Ford came to see you today, and we had a new young man on the gate, and he wouldn't let him in. And he's absolutely furious. For God's sake, will you call him up and calm him down and see what you can do? So I did, and he agreed to come back the next day. It was to get a handshake agreement from me to make The Quiet Man. I have a fearful temper. You might as well know about it now instead of finding out about it later. We Danahers are a fighting people. I can think of a lot of things I'd rather do to one of the Danahers. He had also a handshake with Victor McLaughlin, uh, Barry Fitzgerald, and the Duke. John Wayne. Then he started trying to finance the movie. Every studio in Hollywood turned it down. Hurry, now is a good time to ask him. Wait, go on, go on. Ask him what? About my money. Eventually, Duke said, please, coach, let me take the script to Herbie Yates at Republic Studios. Yates read it, and he said, well, this is a silly little Irish story. It'll never make a penny, but, and that was the magic word, but. He said, if the same producer, Marion C. Cooper, the same director, John Ford, and the same cast make me a Western first, so I will recoup the money I'm going to lose, I'll finance it. And that's how we made The Quiet Man. It was financed on that basis. Money becomes a bone of marital contention for newlyweds John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara in The Quiet Man. Saturday at 8 p.m., part of TCM's Summer Under the Star Salute to John Wayne.